Hey, hello guys, this is Kathy from EasyRoadAutomation.com and this is part 10 of our Android app automation with Robotium series. And in this part, we're going to discuss about writing a super simple code with Robotium. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 and part 9 since this part is going to be a continuation of those two parts. So writing a super simple code with Robotium. So in this part, we will start writing our super simple code to automate our Android's native application using Robotium. But we have partially did some of the object identification and performing some typing operation using Robotium in our application under test control. So we will also try to identify some other controls in our application under test and then perform the rest of the operations. So this way we can make sure that all our controls are identified using Robotium and we could able to perform the operation which we are about to. So let's not waste our time and jump into Eclipse. So I'm going to flip to Eclipse. So this is our same project which we worked in our last video of this video series. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to identify some other controls as well. So I'm going to identify the radio button which perform the addition, multiplication, etc. for my controls in my application. So I'm going to do rd multiply is equal to radio button of solo dot get view of r dot id dot we have something called rd multiply so this will actually perform the multiply operation for me so this one is not identified so i'm going to import and then also i'm going to verify whether my resultant is as expected or not so the resultant is nothing but my text view which returns the result of my number which i have entered so the result is actually coming in this particular control so what is the value for that? The value is actually, I believe it's txt results, yes. So I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm going to also identify this control. So it's nothing but a text view. So I'm gonna type text view of txt, text view of view result, and then text view solo dot get view of r dot id dot txt result all right and then this is again missing so i'm going to import this great so now we have identified all the controls so let's say i'm going to write this as identifying all the controls and then the next operation we need to do is to perform the operation into the control. So that I can say that performing operations in the control. Right. So this is a typing operation. And then we can verify if we enter 20 and 22, the resultant value should be 42. Right. So for that, what I can do is I can just type 42. So I can verify if view result dot get text. There is a method available which will actually return you the text which is there in the particular view. And then I can verify to string dot equals of ignore case of the value which we know that it is 22 if they are all same then just tell me that it has got passed so for that i'm going to use a logging mechanism which is available in android the logging is nothing but log dot D if you put it is a debug mode. So this is actually not Something to do with Robotium. This is available in Android So all these loggings you can see in the log cat. So this is the log cat which is available along with your Android while you install it in Eclipse. 
so this will show you all the logging of your application under test at the same time the log of your Android itself see so this has categorized the test has categorized me something like this com dot example dot calculator so this is a session filter so based upon your application the filter is just automatically added and it will tell you that this is what you're going to search for but you can also add some more filter if you want to so we'll talk about this filters and tagging in few minutes just give me a second so let me first perform the operation that i'm going to do right now so log.d off i can just so if you just open this log.d you can you can type the value here like add past so now the d is actually expecting two strings as you can see here but we have passed only one string so the another string is nothing but to tell the log that you are categorizing with a tag so the tag is what we need to pass here so the tag is let's say calci test so this is our tag to identify from the rest of log which is generated in the log cat right so as you can see here there is some tag dal kvm and similarly there is something called test runner and also there is something called g r a l l o c goldfish so all these are some of the tags which is to separate from the rest of the log file similarly since we are going to write our own log file we need to somehow separate from the rest of log file so that we can easily identify okay this is the log file which you are going to see and this is what is the resultant of our test which you are going to perform and this is the log file which is generated right so you don't have to scroll a long way and see what is happening with your log file right and then that's the reason that we are passing this calci test here and the next thing is the else we need to write the test got failed so i can say add failed so i'm going to save it like this right so as of now this is fine then we'll write about the multiplication as well so i'm going to save this and now i'm going to just run this test so for running this i click the project and run android j unit test so the test has started it has to type the value 2022 and it has to verify the 42 is coming or not so i think the test is completed we then need to see what is our resultant again all the results are available in this particular log cat so if you come down here you can see that our log is this so it says that the calci test add failed so this is not is what it is expecting so somehow the test got failed it couldn't able to verify whether the result is 22 it is not 22 actually the result is 42 and that is the reason why it has got failed so as we intentionally did it is really working as expected so the failed is still working and now we are expecting the test to get passed so we have ex exactly passed the exact value here so now if i try to run this test it should get passed so i'm running this test So it's typing the value there all right and now if I can see the result in the log cat by scrolling all the way up or down and here you can see the test got passed so that is a real pain as you can see I'm every time I'm scrolling up and down and seeing what happened to my test so in order for not to do all these things what I can do is I can filter the similar message like this see this will automatically add a session filter for me and you can give the filter name as test result and then you can hit so by pid if you want to pass you can pass else you just remove that and hit ok so this will add the result for you so the next time while you execute the test this will automatically add in right here for you so i'm just trying to run this test and you can see 
that next time the test result you can directly see in this particular filter rather going to the lockcat filter rather going to this example filter see now the test got passed and you can see it right here instead of going there right so this is the advantage of saving all the logs in a filter in lockcat right so the next operation we need to do is to see if the multiply is working fine or not so i'm going to write the multiply and then we need to click that multiply button so for that solo dot click in click on view so the view is nothing but rd multiply right i'm going to click on the multiply button and then i'm going to perform the same operation right and then i want to see whether 20 into 22 is 440 or not so i'm going to type 440 here and i'm expecting it to be passed this time so multiply passed or else multiply failed so if you execute this test now the test will get passed because we have passed exactly what we are expecting right so that's it guys so this is the way you can write a very super simple code in android to perform a very simple operation like addition or multiplication in your calculator application so this is the way that you can identify the controls you can perform the operation and also you can assert them whether it is working fine or not you can also use assertion in our case so in the next video we'll start to work with a hybrid application of android and then we'll start to develop that and also we'll start to write a code for the particular hybrid application right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day